Hi, this is Wendy Lightheart. In this video, we're going to learn how to add and subtract radical expressions. Adding and subtracting radical expressions is very similar to combining like terms. So if you remember back when you first learned about like terms and how to combine them, you'll remember that for an expression like this we have here, 5x plus 3x, since the variable portions of those two terms are exactly the same, they're both x terms, we can combine them with addition. And the way that we do that is we actually add the coefficients, the 5 and the 3, and that will tell us how many x's we have all together. So this becomes 8x. I like to think of it as combining like objects. So we have 5x's and we add 3 more x's to that, that will give us a total of 8x's. Now, notice that it's very similar when we add like radicals. So we call these two terms, 5 square roots of 2 and 3 square roots of 2, like radicals, because the radical part of those terms is exactly the same. They both have a square root of 2 as their radical part. So in order to add them, we do the same thing that we did when we combine like terms. We take the 5 and the 3 that are in front of those square roots of 2, they're kind of like coefficients, we add them together, and that's how many square roots of 2 we have all together. So notice that just like with combining like terms, the variable part does not change for our final answer. And the same thing with combining like radicals. Our answer is still going to be a square root of 2 term. And the 8 comes from just adding the two numbers that are in front of those square roots of 2's. So we have a total of 8 square roots of 2. Here's a similar one with subtraction. So if we have 7x squared minus 4x squared, since they're both x squared terms, the variable par portion is exactly the same, we can go ahead and combine them with subtraction, and we do that by doing the subtraction between the coefficients, 7 minus 4, and we end up with 3x squared. So it's like we have 7x squareds, and we take away 4x squareds from that, we'll have a total of 3x squareds left. Very similar with subtracting radicals. Here we have 7 square roots of 3 minus 4 square roots of 3. Since they're both square roots of 3's, their radical parts are exactly the same, we can go ahead and subtract them, and we do that by subtract doing the subtraction between the 7 and the 4, and that will tell us how many square roots of 3 we have. So again, this, the radical part does not change. Our answer is still in square root of 3 form. And we have, we have, we started with 7 square roots of 3, we take away 4 square roots of 3, and we end up with a total of 3 square roots of 3. So again, very similar to adding and subtracting like terms. Now what if they're not like terms? Remember that if we had something like 2x plus 5x squared, we cannot combine those with addition because the one of them is an x term and the other one's an x squared term. So the variable portion is not exactly the same. Same thing applies to radicals. If the radical portion is, is not exactly the same, we cannot combine them with addition or subtraction. So 2 squared to 2 has squared to 2 as its radical part and 5 squared to 3 has squared to 3 as its radical part. And squared to 2 and squared to 3 are not the same and so we cannot combine these two terms because they are not like radicals. Okay, so let's look at some examples. This first one, we have 15 square roots of 3, and we add 7 square roots of 3, and then we take away 8 square roots of 3. So notice that with all three of these terms, the radical portion is exactly the same. They're all square roots of 3 terms. So we can go ahead and perform this addition subtraction by performing the addition subtraction between the 15, the 7, and the 8, and then our answer will be square roots of 3. So 15 plus 7 is 22, take away 8, that would give us 14 square roots of 3. Now in example 2, notice that we have three terms, but only two of them are like radicals. 8 square roots of 6 and the 13 square roots of 6. So we can add those together by adding the 8 and the 13, and that's how many square roots of 6 we have total. But the minus 12 square roots of 3 is going to stay exactly the same. It cannot be combined with the other two because it's not a like radical with the other two. 
A plus 13 is 21, so our, for our final answer, we have 21 square roots of 6 minus 12 square roots of 3. Okay, let's look at another example. We want to add 5 square roots of 12 plus 2 square roots of 27. Well, of course, these radical parts are not exactly the same, so we cannot add them in their current forms. However, square root of 12 can be simplified because it has a perfect square of 4 as a factor. And same thing for 27. 27 has a 9 as a perfect square factor, so square root of 27 can also be simplified. So first, we need to simplify each of these radicals, and then maybe their simplified forms will be like radicals, and then we can go ahead and perform the addition. So we're going to split apart the square root of 12 into square root of 4 times square root of 3, since 4 is the biggest perfect square factor of 12. And the square root of 27 will get split apart into the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, since 9 is the biggest perfect square factor of 27. And now, the square root of 4 and square root of 9, since they are perfect squares, we can go ahead and simplify those. Square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 9 is 3. So we have 5 times 2 times square root of 3 for our first term. And then we're going to add to that 2 times 3 times square root of 3. Now the 5 and the 2, since those do not have any radical sign over them, we can go ahead and multiply those together to get 10. And same thing for the 2 times 3 in our second term. We can go ahead and multiply those together to get 6. So now our two terms have been simplified as much as possible. And notice that now, they are like radicals, so we can go ahead and add them together by adding the 10 and the 6 together to get 16 square roots of 3. Okay, let's look at another example. So here we want to subtract these two terms, and of course they are not like radicals in their current form. But we're going to simplify each of these radicals, and it may be the case that they will be like radicals in their simplified forms, and then we can do the subtraction if that's the case. So with 80, um, the biggest perfect square factor of 80 is 16, and the x cubed, we can take out an x squared. Um, with the 45x, we could take a 9, which is a perfect square out of 45, but of course x, there are no perfect square factors. So we're going to split them apart like so, square root of 80 x cubed, if we factor out the biggest perfect square factors, 16 and x squared, we have 5x left over. And then if we factor out the 9 from the 45x, we have 5x left over. So now we can simplify those perfect squares in our next step. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of x squared is x, so we get 4x from that radical. And then square root of 9 is 3. Now the f 9 and the 4x have multiplication between them, and neither one of those are underneath the radical, so we can go ahead and multiply them together to get 36x. And then the 3x times 3, we can do this similar thing and combine those with the multiplication to give us 9x. So now we have 36x square roots of 5x minus 9x square roots of 5x. And since they are now like radicals, we can go ahead and perform the subtraction. So remember, we're going to take the 36x in front of the first radical and then subtract the 9x that's in front of the second radical, which will give us 27x, and that's how many square roots of 5x we have total. So that is our final answer, and that's it for today.